On Friday, the former emergency vice minister Blais Abdalin was sentenced to 10 years of imprisonment. The announcement of the verdict lasted for two hours. The former official is accused of large-scale bribing. Abla and Medina Sabdalins were holding hands during the verdict announcement, which lasted for about two hours. The former emergency vice minister is accused of power abuse, lobbying the interest of a particular company during a tender and an attempt to bribe a financial police inspector with $30,000. Public prosecutor Azamat Ahmedjanov requested 12 years of imprisonment for Sabdalin. The court settled for 10 years in a maximum security penal colony. <laughs> This is unfair. We love you. The courtroom was overcrowded. Sabdalin's family, friends and colleagues all came to support him during the hearing. The verdict shocked everyone in attendance and many believed that Sabdalin was framed. The final verdict for Ablai Sabdalin is 10 years of imprisonment with no further right to hold state position for seven years and confiscation of property. The case lasted for four months. Sabdalin's attorney, Vinera Kim, sees no political motives in the case. She said that Sabdalin was simply framed. The ex-wise minister's wife, who is also a public defender, has a different opinion. Sabdalin was not the last target of the financial police in their provocations. It was assumed that Sabdalin, like Ilyasa, will agree to participate in further provocations to identify other people. At the end of the trial, Ablai Sabdalin said he intends to appeal the verdict of the Interdistrict Specialized Court in the near future. The Almaty City Court upheld the judge's decision in regards to the leader of the unregistered party Alga Vladimir Kozlov. Earlier in the week, the activist was sentenced to 15 days in jail. Vladimir Kozlov was accused of organizing a peaceful march near the office of the unregistered party Alga, which was broken by the police. Despite the fact that Kozlov was not seen among the protesters, the court still recognized him as the coordinator of the unsanctioned rally. Even the video of the event presented by the defense failed to have any effect. Vladimir Kozlov was ruled to continue serving his 15 days in jail, together with other convicted members of the civil society, Yermek Narimbaev, Ainur Kurmanov and Asyan Utishbaev. <laughs> Everything that happened after the meeting was sudden and unexpected for those present there. We didn't expect the police to block all exits. I still see no reason in the police actions. An obelisk in the memory of dead soldiers in the Almaty suburbs was sold into private ownership and enclosed with a fence. Nevertheless, on the eve of the Victory Day, local residents were able to find out that the monument is still under the state protection. A recreation center and an obelisk to soldiers killed during the Second World War somehow ended up behind a high fence and in private ownership. Local resident Jason Bektabanbaev says officials sold the monument to almost 300 soldiers back in 1991. Maybe the sale of the center was reasonable, but they should not have done with the state-protected heritage, the monument where people used to lay flowers for many decades. Serik Kazakbaev, the activist of the movement Tabigat, says the obelisk is under the protection of lone historical monuments, but public activists learned about it only on the eve of the Victory Day. The monument is in the register of state-protected assets. It is indeed located on the private property, but it is considered a social-cultural facility. Thus, it must fall under special supervision and control. Pupils of the village school come here to play after classes through the hole in the fence. Boys know from their teachers that the monument is dedicated to those killed in the war. However, it was not the curiosity about history that brought kids here. They have their own mysteries to solve. We were coming back from school when we saw this hole, went through this and saw this monument. Then I remembered that my friend told me that there were ghosts here, so we went to investigate. The new district head, Karat Kulimbaev, has another mystery as he cannot find documents of the obelisk's ownership. The official refuses to talk to journalists but claims the monument was sold indeed. That is why Kulimbaev intends to open a new memorial next to the administration building in time for the Victory Day celebrations. In fact, everything is ready and only the eternal flame needs to be lighted. Unfortunately, the 40-year-old obelisk will remain neglected for an indefinite time. The action Victory Ayers was launched in Astana on Friday as a stand of gratitude was opened next to Baitirek, the main site of the city. There, anyone can express their feelings of the Victory Day by applying a special sticker. 
The stickers were designed as postage stamps and wartime postcards. First mini letters with words of gratitude to veterans were left by pupils of the Jasulan school and winners of the contest for best essay or war story. Notably, most messages had no grammatical mistakes. We wish you happiness, good health, peace and all the best. We can assure you that we will study well and achieve our goals. This were all the latest updates from Kazakhstan. Have a good, have a good weekend.